Laura from New York, it's Ask an Engineer. Hey everybody, welcome to another fabulous and fantastic Ask an Engineer. I'm Lady Ada, I'm the engineer here. And this is Phil. All right. Phil's on camera control. I press buttons. And he's here <laughs> with me, and we're going to do this show now called Ask an Engineer. That's right. Tell them what's on tonight's show, Phil. On tonight's show, the code is Ampere. In celebration of our first episode of Circuit Playground, A is for Ampere. We're going to go over the show and tell. We had some great folks showing off some great projects. It was April Fool's Week, so there is an entire week of fun, from Ferengis to cats wearing headphones to microwaves with surface display technology. It was Zephyr and Cochran Day. Uh, I think we made up that holiday, but it happened. Love mailbag. Love some news in the wonderful world of open source hardware. Arduino news. Something from Makey Makey Monday. Something from the Adafruit Learning System. We'll be debuting Circuit Playground. Wearable Wednesday, 3D Thursday, Pi Day, we'll have new products, we might have some time from some top secret, we'll answer your questions, we'll have a trivia question, all that and more on Ask an Engineer. Alright. Yay! It's a show. Okay. We're here. Alright. Uh, let's take care of some business first. Okay. Uh, the code tonight is Ampere. 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 Ten percent off everything in stock in the Named store. for the scientist Andre Marie Ampere. Yeah. Um, let's. Uh, we got a lot to go through tonight. So yeah. No, I'm here right now. Let's start. Let's start going. I'm all ears. Yeah. <laughs> uh, show and tell. Every week we yeah. have the show and tell people from around the world show their cool projects. Yes. And on this week's show and tell, we, we had. Have uh, Tom Lynch. Tom Lynch. He had the open source vacuum cleaner. He's a student at RCA. Yeah. He has an exam, but he stayed up to show him, us his open source <laughs> vacuum cleaner, which he has on GitHub. The open source vacuum cleaner um, is uh, now one of my favorite projects. It happened that fast because really? it's one of those like, oh, why didn't why didn't we think of that? Of course, like everybody just goes after. Oh, we should have an open source car. Okay, well I've heard that for like the last six years. Open source vacuum cleaner is actually something to be useful for every hackerspace. Yeah. It's something we could all improve on. Yeah. It's all. It's it. it th this is a really really good idea. So I'm glad to see. It's an essential technology. Yeah. And. Uh, and you hackable. Know, There's probably cool stuff Hackable. To do. Um, I'd like to know the RPMs for my vacuum cleaner as I'm vacuuming. Yeah. Um, but you know it could evolve over time too, where maybe we'll all make our own robotic vacuum cleaners. Yeah. You know, like, uh, make our own Roombas, things yeah. like that. So I thought that was the. And you also mentioned that there is a Maker Fair UK coming up. That's right. Um, we're going to be posting about it. He sent us an email already. So. Yeah, Mini Maker Fair at Elfin Castle in London. So if you're in the UK, please go. Yeah. You will go. Anyway. I'd like to. All right. Next up, Chris Young showed up. Chris Young has showed up uh, again with his batch PCB, made PCB that he designed. Yeah. A couple weeks ago, and he shows us renderings. He finally got the PCBs back. Uh, it's the IRIO. It's a sort of re remote control blaster. Yeah, and this this particular device helps uh, Chris. Uh, his uh, challenges. He has a disability, so he has to be able to control multiple things. Yeah. And he then released this uh, product uh, project for other people, yeah. and they can get it too. So yeah. it's really like it's, it's a very helpful tool for the disabled community. I'm really impressed with this. Like seeing electronics being made and he's a programmer and now he's doing hardware yeah. and now he's making a specific tool a specific thing to help him super cool really yeah. like it and then uh last up justin shaw showed um he has uh, uh he's hacking away on the uh, e-ink displays which we'll be showing off shortly and he showed um some of the things that he was tinkering yeah. with with that so um that was really neat um yes. All participants on the show and tell get a show and tell sticker. Email support for to come and you get a show and tell sticker. Show and tell stickers making the rounds. People put them on their projects. They're nice. We'll see it. We'll see that maybe on the open source. They're vinyl stickers. Yes, yeah. I would like the sticker on the open source vacuum. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Lady Ada, how do people get on the show and tell? Super easy. Just go to our Google Plus page at plus.google.com slash plus symbol Adafruit and uh, leave a comment on the post where we say, hey, leave a comment here to get added to the show and tell circle. We add you to the circle. Yeah. We invite you uh, to the show and tell every Saturday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You show up, you show off your project, you get a sticker, yeah. and then the, the cycle of life continues. The show and tell is going to be reproduced and replicated from a variety of companies. Friends of ours said, you know what, we just really like the, the show and tell idea, we're just going to do it, what do you think? And we're like, rip yes. us off, please. Yes, 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 this is the best thing ever. Yeah. So what I'd like to see one day is for each site that has a community 
of uh, users, customers, uh, code contributors, hardware contributors do a show and tell. Yeah. That's really neat. And I think that that would be an interesting trend to, to kick off. Because, you know, companies always look at each other and like, oh, look, this company's doing this. We should do that. We should have a Tumblr. We you should know, have a YouTube. We should do this. We should, we should have, have a Google Plus. Yeah. We should have a show and tell. Whatever. Yeah. And this is one of the things that uh, we'd like to see every company kind of have their version of it. Like if you're a 3D printing company, if you're an educational electronics company, if you're this company, that company, it'd be cool to have. Remember, if it's open source, it's not stealing. It's just going by the license. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. ideas aren't really... You want ideas to get out well, there. Well, no, it's not like we, we like Creative Commons, this idea, but we, yeah, we no, like it when there's more people doing yeah, stuff that we there's do. Really, and this is not really a, a, an original idea. I think um, being able to show stuff in a show and tell format. I did this format, in second grade. Yeah, everyone has. Now we just have good technology. Okay. So. All right. Okay. Um, this week was April Fool's, which basically is like the official corporate holiday. I don't know how that happened, but yeah. um, every company now contributes to this April Fool's Day thing. So basically, the internet's useless on April first. It's, it's pretty useless. So um, we um, we tried. It's to, a good day to work on tax. Yeah, is what I did. We tried to um, collect some of the more fun ones. So we did have one thing on our site. We put that we're going to accept gold, gold press latinum. Uh, John Junior posted this up. Um, you know. It is making fun of a little bit of the, the Bitcoin thing that's going on. Because they get asked that. They're like, hey, you're going to take Bitcoin. I want competing cryptocurrencies. Yeah. Um, it's a, it's what's, a, the, what's the point of having just one? Yeah. I, I still have an awesome Flues portfolio that people yeah. do. Yeah. I'm going to cash those in soon. <laughs> Flues. Flues. Um, but uh, it, it, Bitcoin's neat. And you know maybe one day we'll, 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 we'll uh, accept payment. But just right now, it does not make sense for us. Um, so some of the... Um, uh, Oh, things that this was uh, IKEA posted up their own flat pack lawnmower. That's actually a good idea. And then uh, Samsung posted up trees. They this said, was not a good one. This was not. You didn't like one. this one so much. No. Um, this, this Sony uh, cat headphones. This was a good idea. Strong showing for because uh, this is a great photo for Sony. Yeah. <laughs> Sony, I mean, that's a cool looking you know, hat. You know what the thing is? Um, Sony needs to work on their, like, they need to build back their image after suing uh, uh, um, makers and, makers and kind of just doing a lot of rotten things over the years. Yeah. Um, they, they, they probably should just make cat headphones. But I don't know if that's okay. I would totally get these for MOSFET. Yeah, MOSFET would like cat headphones. He loves listening to, like, bird chirps. <laughs> yeah. Um, Nokia has a uh, you know, Surface. This is the Microsoft uh, ver Microsoft microwave, basically, that Nokia yeah. came up with. Um, ThinkGeek, a Play-Doh 3D printer. I like this. This is a cool idea. Yeah. And then, what I like uh, about the ThinkGeek ones is that half of them become products and half of them like end up... Yeah, they're not messing around. And you know what is funny is, like I don't know, maybe five years ago, it was some Maker Faire or something, and we were talking about, oh, what's the future of 3D printing? And I said, hey, you know, one of the things that we're probably going to see is a big giant toy company get in this space. I thought it could be Play-Doh because they already have the brand, they have the the distribution, they could pull yeah. it off. So I don't know. This might be this might be one that we're not um, shocked to see come out later. I mean, it won't be Play-Doh, of course, coming out of it, but you know. Yeah, it'll be, but it'll be something similar. I mean, like that'd be kind of cool, yeah. right? Like it doesn't have to be something that you yeah. heat up; it could be just extruded. Right, yeah. so the chocolate chocolate three D printers. It's yeah. you know, it's melted chocolate. You don't need it maybe because yeah. it went through your extruder, but um, you know you can remelt it afterwards. Yeah. Uh, next up, we posted up uh, Zephyr and Cochrane Day. This is um, uh, a holiday that we made up. Um, <laughs> John Janier. <laughs> John Janier. Yeah, John Janier. Uh, uh, it's a it's a neat idea because it celebrated you know April fifth two thousand sixty three, which is the first like test of a warp drive and it caught the attention of the Vulcans and then we were in the United Federation of Planets. Which which series was this? this well, this event? is just the this is history and one of the next generation movies that came out afterwards oh, yeah. had this as a as a plot line. Okay. Um, they go back in time. There's Borg and there's all sorts of things going on. But anyways. Um, this is a like a, a, a post devastation on planet Earth, but then Zephyr and Cochran invented the warp drive, and things got really better. Was, after he, that. was he a maker? Oh um, yeah, he was a maker. He was also he was very he was also very cranky. So uh, <laughs> yeah. So um uh the goal, but the idea of this was like, hey, that was a really big bold idea. Yeah. You know, let's let's you know figure out warp technology. So um, Zephyr and Cochran Day. It's based on a fictional story, but yeah, this is a fictional holiday. Okay. Great. Yeah. So if you like if you I, like Star Trek First Contact, it's I like, like Star Trek, but I'm not that kind of fan. <laughs> I think it's just John and I who really like it here. So I think you guys are just trying to one-up each other. Yeah, there's a little bit of that. Okay. Okay. Next up. 
Let's uh, jump right into mailbag. the yeah, pack the mailbag. On the mailbag this week, people send us letters. That's a nice short one. This is a nice short one. This is from Andrew. <laughs> of any company, Adafruit has the best customer service, both in emails and on the forums. Thank you, Andrew. Yay! Thank you, Andrew. We do try. Um, the forums are fantastic. Bill, Rick, and Mike do a fantastic job there, and so does the entire team. And uh, behind the scenes here, um, lots of folks, Matt, myself, and others, answering lots of questions all the time. Next up, some news in the world of open source hardware. Um, well, there's a couple things. Okay. So first, um, I'll bounce back and forth. So it's open source hardware news and Arduino news. So I'm going to just do it at the same time. Ooh. Yeah. So now we're going to go to this image and then go to this. Okay. There you go. Anyways, so um, uh, we'll get to this because it's a new product. But a new Arduino is out. Uh, yeah. It's the Micro. And this one is the one without headers, the, without the headers down the side. We have it. It's super tiny. It's my favorite Arduino. Um, that's that's open source hardware news and also Arduino news. Uh, in open source hardware news, there is an event that Make is putting on the Make Hardware Innovation yeah. Workshop. We were there last year, so we it were was getting awesome. out, we we're getting out of the way so other people could go. But there's an excellent list of yeah. people. So Chris Anderson, now the CEO of 3D Robotics, was the editor in chief of Wired. Uh, Massimo, co-founder of Arduino, Rob Paluti, uh, co-creator of Lilypad XP and Botanicals, also a Digi. Um, uh, hey, Bunny. Uh, ben Kaufman from uh, Quirky, Dave Merrill from Siftio. Um, the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big Ro- collection of people. Robert here. Stevens, founder of uh, Geek Squad, then CTO of Best Buy. That's a big one. Jay Silver, founder of Makey Makey. That's a big one too. These are all just like massive ones. Zach Smith, program director at Accelerate. John Dematos from Kickstarter. Yeah, Zach Kaplan, CEO of Inventables. John Park. Yeah. From AQS. That's right. So this this is just like a lot of of people. So if you're in the maker world. Um, go for uh, uh, this uh, conference if you can. This is especially really if you're going to be doing uh, like manufacturing and business. Yeah, and um, I'm not. Yeah, and I, this is it's interesting because there's not only a bunch of small companies, one person, two person companies, medium sized companies, um, investment people, um, yeah. enablers. It's it's a really nice mix. So yeah. do do check it out. Yeah. Um, it's right before Maker Fair. Yeah. Next up, speaking of like Maker Biz World, um, for the Geek Dad fans out there, um, so this is like some inside baseball, as they say. So Chris Anderson, at, when he was editor in chief of Wired, helped get this Geek Dad site going. Yeah. And uh, Geek Dad became a really popular property for for parents. So there's also Geek Mom. There's Geek Dad. Yeah. Uh, these two sites, um, they've they're, they've spun off. Now they're yes. their own separate entity outside of Wired. Yeah. Now, Chris, uh, maybe like maybe the, the, after Chris left, or you know, they just decided that made sense too. But what's interesting is this is a trend. There's these maker properties that have developed under a bigger company. So Make was part of O'Reilly, now spun off. In fact, this is the latest uh, issue of Make, and they've made some changes to the magazine. Um, I used to be senior editor now. Now I'm uh, editor at large. It's my Whoa. title. But the um, you know they they have the new Maker Media little thing on the bottom, so it's changed. The cover stock has changed a little bit. It's um, it's, it's not, shinier. Uh, yeah, and it's yeah. not uh, O'Reilly anymore. Doesn't say O'Reilly on it. So uh, very interesting. Um, same great make taste, uh, but um, it's the same basic size, right? Yeah, everything it's is the size. A, but I mean, it's the same team. Yeah, um, slightly different um, uh, things that they're doing with the magazine. Very cool. Uh, yeah. Check it out. It's the latest issue, by the way. Ooh. Yeah. So, anyways, I'm noticing this trend. You know, you're, we're starting to see maker companies, if they started at a, a, a larger company, spin off. So, I think Geek Dad. Yeah, this is, is there. really exciting. Makes there now too. Um, next up, so we have Mickey Mickey Monday. Um, Mickey Mickey, one of our favorite products. We talk Jay Silver, who's speaking at that conference. That yes. We talked about. Um, this is uh, banana pong. So you can play pong with bananas using a Mickey Mickey. And here it is. It's cool. So that was Mickey Mickey Monday. Infrared Learning System, Lady Ada, we got two tutorials on the... More bananas. Infrared, yeah, Infrared Learning System. This week, what were they? Okay, we started off with... Um, this was a, actually a tutorial... A, well, we moved the tutorial system over, and so I didn't really finish it until this week. Um, this tutorial is how to use our SMT breakout board. So there's a little bit of a tutorial on how to um, solder SMT, but also just sort of, you know, demonstrating how to, um, you know, you have a surface map part like this SOIC chip, and you're like, hey, I want to use it in a breadboard, and we just kind of go through the process of, of getting it on that board, getting it ready, and using it. Yep. That's simple, but people were asking, hey, I want some more details. What's up? Uh, this is a tutorial by Simon Monk. Um, this is based on another project we saw, and it sh- uses our like super mega huge uh, LED displays. Um, this is a uh, clock slash temperature 
meter. So it uses a real-time clock, and it uses a digital um, temperature sensor, a DS18B20. So it's a, it's a really nice tutorial that mixes um, three uh, separate tutorials. So it's kind of showing how to combine a temperature sensing tutorial, real-time clock tutorial, and um, an LED matrix tutorial to make a uh, standalone temperature and time display that's really big. Okay. Next up, um, we have a, a big, uh, I guess, project that we're doing. We're doing yes. 26 videos um, soon. Um, we just fit, kicked off the first one. We're going to keep trying to uh, do these. Um, our new series for kids called Circuit Playground debuted. It's not just for kids, though. Yeah, well, you for say everybody. you say it's for kids, and that way parents and, and, and just adults won't feel bad when they're like, I learned a lot from that. That's what yeah, you have yeah. to say. It's a okay. trick. Right. But we can't tell everybody that. I don't know. Oh, anyways, I this. anyways, it's okay, based sorry. on our coloring book, Lady Ada's Ease for Electronics. Um, this one is starring Lady Ada, starring Adabot, starring Colin. Not um, Colin and Pierre. As in Pierre. <laughs> and uh, it's it's it, we're just getting started. Just like Ask an Engineer is three and a half years old, and we've done lots of things over time to make the show better. Um, we're we're instead of trying to do the perfect thing. We're doing um, these, and uh, each one we're going to uh, do more, and uh, some might be longer, some might be shorter, some might have guest appearances from other people. Um, the first one was A is for Ampere, Circuit Playground, yes. and the next one is B is for Battery, and we're having fun stuff Ooh. with that. But here it is, the uh, Ask an Engineer premiere of Circuit Playground, A is for Ampere. Okay, let's see it. Wait, who did I trip? No, no, the circuit breaker isn't a person, it's a device in that box over there. The circuit breaker turns off all the electricity when we draw too much electrical current. Oh. And it's also something only a grown-up should touch. Committed to memory. Wow, powering all my stuff must use a lot of current. That's right, and we measure electrical current in amperes. Huh, why do we call it that? The ampere is named after the scientist, Mr. Andre Marie Ampere. That's right, and Mr. Ampere was very curious about how electricity works. Curious? Like me? This is true. And he conducted many experiments to learn about electricity. The results of these experiments showed Mr. Ampere that electricity is created by the movement of many teeny objects, which are so small we can't even see them. Electrodynamic molecules? Nowadays, we call these teeny objects electrons. And when electrons move, we call that electrical current. Makes sense to me. Oh, now I get it, Lady Ada. But how do we measure amperes? That's easy. We use a multimeter. Oh, I wish I had one of those. In this circuit, electrons flow from one end of the battery, through the LED, and then back to the other end of the battery. By sending the current through a multimeter, we're able to measure the amount of electrons flowing through. So this LED is using... 0 0.05 amperes. Correct. I wish I could see electrons move. You may not be able to see every single electron, but you can see the effects of electrical current. Really? How do we do that? Well, you can see it when your boombox makes sound, or when your toaster heats up. 
heats up, and you can feel it when your blow dryer blows higher at you. I get it. Electrical current makes electricity go. Those electrons are amazing. That's right, Adabot. Hey, you don't, you don't have any hair, right? What? Hello. Okay, All right. and that's it. Circuit Playground. Whew. You are now a puppeteer. I had nothing to do with this. Yeah. It was all you guys. Okay. Um, so, uh, 25 more to go. B is for battery is next. And uh, what we, <clears throat> what we want to do is make this a fun kind of, you know, property that uh, uh, kids will watch with parents, uh, just regular mm -hmm. uh Youngsters and oldsters can learn about electronics and the coloring book that you can download for free or uh, buy a copy to help support Adafruit um, is available too. And mm -hmm. that's kind of the guide that goes along. So yes. we're going to keep this up. Alright, so go watch that video again on YouTube and, uh, I don't know, like it or something. Yeah. Up, up arrow it. Yeah. The thumbs. Okay, next up. Um, I want to make sure we have enough time here. Yeah. Uh, Wearable Wednesday. Lots of things in the world of wearables. Uh, this week, uh, Jeff, who's here, he works with us and does new products and lots of other things in the fabrication department. Also, the godfather of glitch. He had some cool posts that he posted up about his scarfs that he makes using glitch art. So you take a ROM from like an Atari and you just like play it through it. You just glitch it. It's called glitching. And then you can make a scarf out of it. Sounds neat. Yeah, it's like the pet of patterns from from shorting out like address lines or something I guess or yeah. randomizing them and uh, they look kind of cool yeah and then uh, we have a video we have a really cool project and uh, we're gonna we're gonna play this video yes um, this is the uh, um, project here I'm gonna switch camera modes and uh, this is the project it is a plushy NES controller Oh. And when you beep, yeah, beep. Well, squish, that, squish. well, it's attached to something that's working right now. Huh. So we're gonna show you how to make one of these. So easy. Right now. No soldering. It's a video from Becky. All right. So here we go. Ever since I first heard about conductive fabric, I've always wanted to make one of these, a plush game controller. And sure, I could have used soft switches made from two layers of conductive fabric and taken apart an old game controller, but really it's more fun to use capacitive touch sensing and the onboard keyboard functionality that comes with Flora, our Arduino-based wearables platform. And it just so happens to have eight I.O. pins that you can hook up to eight pads of conductive fabric and play all your favorite classic games online. We made a free pattern for this project to help you make the circuit and the plush toy. So download it, print it out, and it'll come on four sheets that you can tile together into one big pattern. And then cut out each individual pattern piece. Find some double-sided iron-on interfacing at your local craft store or online and cut a small piece to iron on to some conductive fabric. You can use your regular iron, just don't use any steam, or I like this tiny little iron. It gives me more control with small pieces. Cut out pieces of the conductive fabric now laminated with double-sided iron-on interfacing into the shape of the buttons of the game controller, according to the pattern. Lay out your fabric so that the fuzzy side is oriented the way you like it. This is called the nap of the fabric. And then decide where to place your conductive fabric pads. Don't put them too close to the edge or you won't have anything to grab onto with your embroidery hoop. We'll cut the design down to match the shape of the front pattern piece later. Using the layout diagram as a reference, peel off the paper backing of the interfacing and iron the conductive fabric onto your regular fabric. Place your flora on the project according to the layout diagram, and then use a water-soluble embroidery marker to draw the lines that you'll later stitch in conductive thread to connect the conductive fabric buttons to the pads on the flora. Now that we know where to stitch, it's time to set up the work in an embroidery hoop. Thread a needle with conductive thread. I like to use the Adafruit stainless steel two-ply for this project. Stitch several times around one of the pads of conductive fabric and tie off the tail at the back and seal that knot with a little bit of clear nail polish. And if you want more tips about working with conductive thread, check out our video on the subject. Once you've made a several loops around, you can start stitching the path along the line you drew with the water-soluble marker up to the corresponding pad on the flora. You could use any embroidery stitch you want, but to keep things simple, we're just using a running stitch, which just goes up and down through the fabric along the line. After stitching around the pads on the flora, 
Make another knot and cut off the tail on the back of the work. Repeat this process for all seven other buttons on your game controller. When you're finished sewing with the conductive thread, you can take everything out of the embroidery hoop and iron out any creases. You can get the sample code for this project as well as Modern Devices Capacitive TouchSense Library on GitHub and just load the code onto your Flora. After programming, open up a text editor and check and see that your keyboard Flora is typing the letters that you expect it to. It's pretty cool. And if yours isn't typing at all, double check your wiring against the diagram and also be sure that your body is grounded. That means your feet should be touching the floor. When you're satisfied with the functionality of your circuit, you can erase the disappearing ink lines by blotting them with a damp paper towel. Now it's time to transform our flat functional circuit into a 3D plushie. Cut black fabric to match the pattern piece that calls to be cut in black, and then use a bigger piece of double-sided iron-on interfacing to make the entire back of it sticky. Then pin the pattern piece to the fabric once more and use a ruler and a sharp blade to cut out the button windows. Unplug the controller from the computer and check and see that your newly created faceplate lines up with your iron-on circuit you made earlier. I then chose to use a small piece of scrap fabric to cover just the flora board so it wouldn't get sticky interfacing on it. Then just iron the rest of it on. Then it's time to cut out all your pattern pieces. So you've got a larger piece of fabric with your circuit embroidered on it. You can lay your pattern piece on top of it and cut that front panel out. And then repeat with all of the rest of your pattern pieces, cutting a back piece, uh, two long side pieces, and two short side pieces. Start constructing your plushie by pinning the side walls together, uh, right sides together, to make a rectangle. And also pay attention that the direction of the fuzz or the nap lines up all the way around. Then machine or hand stitch these seams and cut off all loose threads. Lay out your back panel and pin the resulting rectangle to it, right sides together all the way around all four edges. Begin stitching near the last third of one of the longer edges. When you get to the corner, lift the presser foot and rotate the project 90 degrees while flipping that extra fabric to lay in the opposite direction. And then continue stitching until you get to the next corner. Remember to stop early on that last side around, leaving a gap to stuff the toy that's about as wide as your hand. Align the bottom part of the plushie to the front piece and pin around all the edges, being sure the nap on the back panel matches the nap on the front panel. Stitch around all four edges and trim any stray threads. Carefully turn the entire thing right side out and remove any stray fuzzies with a lint roller or some packing tape. Then get set up to stuff the plush toy. You'll start with the corners and use a pen or a chopstick to help push small bits of polyester stuffing into the corners and then continue filling with small bits into the inner cavity of the plush toy until you achieve the desired firmness you would like. Bring the needle from the inside to the outside of the fabric hiding the knot on the inside of the plush toy. Then stitch along the seam using a ladder stitch. This stitch grabs pieces of fabric on alternating sides of the seam resulting in threads that look like rungs of a ladder. And when cinched tight this stitch is almost invisible. When you meet up with the machine stitching at the other end of the seam, you can tie a double knot with the needle and then bury the needle into and out of the plush toy at a random other spot and trim the thread that buries the lead inside the plush toy. It's easy to find your favorite classic game emulator online, and we've also provided a couple of the examples we used in the tutorial for this project, and all the links are in the description below. You can reprogram the Arduino to make these capacitive touch buttons print any keyboard button you'd like, so it's configurable to any game emulator you can find. It's also highly addictive and a whole lot of fun. When not in use, you can just unplug the USB cable and the controller will look just as great on your desk or on the couch. Now it's your turn. Show us your electronics projects in our weekly show and tell on Google Plus and subscribe. Okay, okay nice video. Yeah, and um, let's... So squishy. Yeah, I'm going to play this now. We're going to okay. switch to the other camera. Lady Ada, maybe you can watch yes. what's going on here. So we got, Ooh, this is a uh, plushy vision, I guess. I'm going to play Pac-Man. Oh, wait, we can... Uh...
What are you doing? This maybe move it a little closer. Okay. So this is Pac-Man over here. And uh, I'm gonna try to play. Alright. Oh boy. Watch out for Pinky. Oh man. Oh no. Uh, oh no. Womp womp. So as you can see, <laughs> it's possible to play. Wait. Let's go. It's hard to play in IRC at the same time. Um, I played a level of Super Mario with it. Yeah. All right. The thing so is, is that you it. normally like you want to rest your fingers on the buttons, but you can't. Yeah. That's the only thing. So we might pick a version that has like a squishy. Yeah. Pads also. Okay, moving right along. We got 3D Thursday. Every Thursday we have tons of 3D posts. I'm only picking a few each week because we got so many. Um, my favorite stuff in the world of 3D printing this week. Yeah. Um, these beautiful 3D printed speakers that are um, impossible to remake and yeah. and do. You need like a fifty thousand dollar 3D yeah. printer. Yeah, but it's awesome. But cool. And there's LEDs inside of them. It's so cool. Um, there was some 3D printing of like living tissue. That was neat. This is kind of a neat project I like. These are 3D printed headphones. Yeah. And of course, the best thing ever probably to ever come out of a 3D printer, the perfect dunking cup for Oreos. Yeah. So they made it so it... What, what do you think about this Oreo like uh, campaign? Seems like they really like got a lot of makers involved. Yeah. Well, first it was Red Bull, and now I think Oreos is like... All right. Red the, Bull and Oreos don't go well together. Though. No, those things that... <laughs> Actually, that might be the... That's the grossest thing I can think of. <laughs> it's pretty gross. It's that... If someone says, oh, there's nothing worse than, like, orange juice and toothpaste, I'd be like, no, Red Bull and Oreos. This did not... They did not evolve together in the same... In the same continent. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, anyway, so, 3D, 3D Thursday. Yeah. 3D printed... Is this a 3D printed cup? Yeah. Oh, I never see, I've never seen 3D printed stuff that was translucent. Yeah. Maybe they use like a. No, I think they translucent stuff. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's because they have the they have the clearish um, PLA. Yeah. Yeah, maybe this is a uh, the PLA stuff. Okay, next up we've got Pi Day. Um, every week, news about Pi, Raspberry Pi, people yeah. doing cool stuff with Pi. Um, new issue of Magpie's out. That's a big deal. A little yeah. Super Nintendo. Speaking of little video game stuff, Super Nintendo uh, Pi case. The the Kindleberry, um, it's an e ink um, display project for the Raspberry Pi, and yeah. then this was a backup camera thing that will tell you when your car or something is close enough, and it uses a bunch of Adafruit things. It was... It was this is a really complicated project. It was intense. It was really neat um, to see that. So, um, before we go off new products, don't forget, the code is Ampere. Ampere! 10% off everything in the Adafruit store. That's in stock. And uh, let's hit new products, though, Data. Okay. It's new product time! New product time. Okay. All right, we got a speaker. We have speakers. Two speakers, actually. They're the same um, shape and size, but one is an 8-ohm speaker and one is a 4-ohm speaker. And um, we have both speakers because um, a lot of um, basic projects with amplifiers, um, they're not, they, don't, they can't drive a very large load. So an 8-ohm 1-watt speaker is pretty good. Um, like a wave shield, for example, 8-ohm uh, 1-watt is exactly how much it can drive. Um, so this is really good for a wave shield. And... Um, for our um, Class D amplifier board, it can drive up to 4 ohms, 3 watts or so. So that's why we have a 4 ohm, um, 3 watt speaker. And it's much louder. So I can actually do a little demo. Sure. Demo. Overhead? Yeah, I can do the overhead, although, you know, it's not, uh, it's all Oh, can you uh, adjust the camera because you've got a... Audio all. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, also, this light. Yeah, we have a light. I this light. Oh. Maybe it's a little bit more clear. Um, so, oh yeah, this is a I forgot this is a magnetic uh, erase board. So let me um, remove one speaker. So let's only play the uh, eight ohm speaker to start, and I will remove this speaker. Do you know the frequency range? Yeah, these are like 20 to uh, 200 hertz to about 200 uh, to 20 the kilohertz. Frequency response for the two things that people want to know. So this is about how loud the uh, 8 ohm speaker is, and then let me swap this one in. Yeah, we can only play like a couple seconds of video uh, or audio because uh, YouTube will shut us down for having someone else's audio. A little. 
So this that is the really four ohm speaker. So yeah, it's, it's like two or three times louder. We're, um, we have logarithmic hearing, so it's hard to uh, actually tell. But they're both about the same speakers. They're both good for like any kind of audio project. Um, they're not audiophile, but they do have a full frequency range. Um, they're not, you know, super expensive speakers, so we don't have like a full um, spectrum analysis for, for both of them. You actually have to spend quite a bit more in order to get speakers that have, um, you know, full body plot. But um, from testing, they seem to be really good for any kind of uh, audio project with music or, or speech. This photo looks like a UFO landing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyways, little tiny batteries. Yeah, these are little uh, mini uh, LiPo batteries. So we ordered these um, a bit ago when we started doing a lot more wearable stuff. Um, we wanted maybe um, batteries that could fit into wearable projects easier. So we have a couple different lithium ion batteries and, and LiPoly batteries. We have a 2600, 2700 milliamp hour one. We have a 1300 milliamp hour one. And this one is only 150 milliamp hours. Okay. So it's, it's really teeny. Um, I'll zoom in because it's so small. It's a really teeny little um, battery. It's about the size of a quarter, um, you know, about you know an inch and a half by an inch or so. Uh, it still has a, a JST cable and a protection circuit inside of it. Um, to charge these, we suggest using our micro lipo charger, which does a hundred milliamp um, charge. I wouldn't charge these. Some some chargers, the default rate is five hundred milliamps. Uh, I mean, you can do it, but it's not suggested. It will, it will lessen the life of the battery. It's not good for the battery. So uh, yeah, keep it to uh, a slower charging rate, but um, these are really small, compact, and uh, should fit in almost any project. Yay, LiPo. Yeah. Okay. Next up. Uh, here it is. The micro. Micro without headers. Micro without headers. Well, it does have headers still. It has the headers on uh, the ISP. Yeah, you could take that off but if you wanted to. You could, um, you could desolder them. I'll also ask them, maybe they'll link over yeah. to it. I think most people don't have a need to reprogram the uh, the micro, and it does add quite a bit of height, but you could clip them off pretty easily. Yep. Um, and most people don't need to connect to those, they just need to connect to the pins on the side. And so this makes it a lot slimmer than um, yeah, you could take the normal micro. Um, I like this. It's, it's super tiny, and it's like my favorite board. It's so cute. Cute little uh, 32 4 board. It's yeah, nice. it's got, um, yeah, it's got, you know, the Good USB there. serial built in because it's a 324 board. It's got a micro connector with the through hole pad so it won't snap off. Has a fuse, has a nice regulator, a 3.3 volt regulator, has a big reset button. Um, two uh, RXTX LEDs here, um, like a standard pin 13 LED. And then on the bottom, there's a, a little power LED, which I like because it kind of like underlights it. It's a blue LED, if I remember correctly, and it's sort of like a underlighting design and then yeah. there's our logo because we worked on this design with them. And yeah, it's a little slimmer and then you can solder directly to the holes, which I thought was kind of nice. Or if you want to put like female headers or something on it. So it's uh, an even slimmer version. Okay. Otherwise, same. Okay. Uh, we'll keep moving and then maybe we'll get to some questions about some of the couple of people had questions. But okay. big star of the show tonight, I think, is this, these e-ink displays. We got them. Yay. Yes, we got this. Yeah, this has been a long time coming. We've been working yeah. on this project for a very long time, and um, we actually contacted um, Epson and PDI, and luckily uh, we were able to eventually um, get these boards that they were um, planning on making. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but all of a sudden, like they're like, "Oh yeah, you know, we have um, multiple uh, graphical e-ink displays." Um, we have played with e-ink displays from uh, PDI and some other companies, um, e-ink that were segmented, and it's it's not as much fun to use a segmented display um, because uh, you can do graphics and more detailed text. So this is uh, a graphics demo that's running off of an Uno, which is over here. No, I'm an Uno. Um, the graphics demo is, is pretty basic. It actually is, is drawing images that are stored on this little 8-pin flash chip over here and displaying them on here. You do need a bunch of pins to drive this display. It's SPI, but you need like four extra pins to... There's a temperature sensor that you have to read from. Um, I guess for e-ink you need to know the temperature, and there's also like a reset pin, and then like a blanking pin, and some other pins. So it does take a couple pins to drive, um, but it's SPI. Uh, it's it's fairly fast to write to, even though you can't 
refresh it that fast because it's a uh, ink display, so it's not like a TFT or anything. Um, we do have some code for the Mega slash Duo that will do full graphical drawing, like you can draw like rectangles and triangles and text and stuff, but that's not ready to be released yet. We still have to do some testing, maybe write something up about it. Um, for now, this is just a drawing these graphics that's stored on the flash. This is what it comes with by default. Um, so it's not like a display that's ready for like, if you don't really know anything about dealing with displays, this is probably not a good yeah, first it's, display. It's, it's still in the advanced world right now, I'd say. So. Yeah, it's for people who are like, oh, I feel comfortable maybe porting this code to another platform yeah. or um, you know, dealing with the fact that you write to Flash and then the Flash you can write to the display because the image is, um, there's so much, so many pixels, you can't buffer it on the Uno. And this is not a display you can read from. Yeah. So you actually have to be able to buffer the entire three kilobytes of uh, SRAM, and an Uno doesn't have that much SRAM, so you actually have to use a Mega or Duo, which the code isn't released for, and blah, blah, blah. So it's, um, it, it's something we want to get into the store quickly, even though it's not um, the tidiest, you know, like beginner-friendly project. Uh, I think there's a lot of people out there who are comfortable writing C code who can do a lot with this display yeah. and uh, get going. It's the only display really on the market that does what this does, which is full graphics. Yeah. Okay, some couple questions about it. You ready? Yes. Um, on the last show until you mentioned having SRAM rather than Flash on the e-ink drivers, did that work out? Um, that was 30 minutes ago. We haven't actually done that. That was only 30 <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> yeah. You have to wait more than 30 minutes for me to write code. <laughs> from from and show and tell to ask an engineer. To design a board. We've only been here the entire time. Yeah, I haven't. We'd have, we'd have an alibi. If I, haven't, I haven't gone up from this chair. Um, yeah. But there will be a version, hopefully, with uh, SRAM on it instead of Flash. Yeah. But that is not going to happen anytime soon. There's no ETA. Yeah. We don't know when that exactly will be done. There's no code written. Is e-ink and e-paper the same thing? Yes, it's the same thing. E-ink is the brand name. Yeah. Okay. E-paper is kind of what they call it when you're not like, you don't put a trademark after it. Yeah, and then I think someone for the batteries wanted to know, um, I'll go over to the battery real quick, can this power a Flora and a GPS? Yes, it can, but only for um, like four hours, maybe five hours. Only four hours? That's a long time. No, but if you're doing a long project, I think the Flora draws like 20 milliamps and the GPS draws like 25, so I'd say like three or four hours. Yeah. Okay. All right. So those are the new products of the week. Okay. Those are the new products. Good showing. I wish I could design a board in the five minutes we had before between Ask Andrew and Show yeah. and Tell. Um, not, not that good yet. All right. So I'm going to do a couple quick questions here. If you disconnect the e-ink display, will the image fade? Um, it will fade. I can actually do that demo right I'll now. i do that I, live? I meant to do that, actually, and I forgot. We're going to do it live. I'll do it live. So... Um, hold on. Let me have it uh, show the cat. I'll turn it off. So I just turned off the power because I didn't want it to change. And then if you careful, you can remove. I wouldn't do this um, because you risk um, breaking the display because it is, is delicate. I mean, it's not the most delicate display I've ever worked with, but it's you know you can rip it. Um, there's this um, FPC connector. But yeah, it will keep the image. Um, I kept one out for about a week and it kept the image. Maybe That's a little cool. more. It depends, I think, on the temperature. I think if it gets warm or cold, it will change. But it, it, it faded a little bit after a week. Um, but you just have to, like, you know, turn it on and refresh it. You know, just like you pulse it, and you can refresh the display pretty easily. So, um, yeah, there you go. Cat on the go. Meow, 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 meow. That's cool. Meow, 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 meow. <coughs> okay. Meow, meow, well, meow, meow, meow. Um, this cat needs headphones. <laughs> we can do um, a, a little bit of, uh, it's not out yet. Just a little bit, though. Okay. All right. Cat back. So, Cat's back and a little bit of it's not out yet, and then we'll go to questions. So, uh, big deliveries this week at Adafruit. Um, picking places here. This uh, was almost a two-ton crate that Lady Ada's standing Six next to. 6,000 pounds. It was big. And then big. Uh, here it is. Uh, we're unpacking it. Um, this is the Samsung Pick and Place. It arrived. It is huge. Yeah, it only, um, took, it only took three weeks. Yeah, for people who are um, on their um, 80s films, um, it was a little bit like getting one of these, Flight of the Navigator. Shut up. Um, this is Lady Ada inside of the Pick and Place machine. I will fit inside. This is some of the many nozzles that pick up Six parts. Six nozzles. Six nozzles. This is us uh, starting to do some a of the A plurality install. of nozzles. Yeah, here's the giant compressor. Yeah, we did get into the compressor. Yeah, that came out like Our crate. compressor would not uh, be able to handle it. Yeah. 
So this is it. This is the uh, pick and place machine that we settled on. It's the SM482. 28,000 components per hour. It is a monster machine. Beast. It is a beast. It's a beast. So we'll, um, we'll have lots of videos and things about it. Uh, it's going to take us a couple of weeks to actually get stuff set up. We have training that we're doing. Yes. Um, we have a lot of, um, uh, we're uh, completing our fabrication line. Mm -hmm. So we'll have uh, lots of future shows, but um, yeah. it is. Uh, we have to get, yeah, we have to get this set up. Yeah. It's unboxed. It's on the floor. It's just sitting there. Yeah. Um, so let's uh, hop to the questions real quick. Someone wants to know where do we get our boards made? They're fan fantastic compared to other company boards. Lady Ada. We get our boards made at Advanced Circuits in Colorado. That's right. Advanced Circuits. So let's go to the questions. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, yeah, Question that's right. Yeah. Questions. All right, so that was one of the questions. Okay, great. Um, someone knows, will we make a soft float Occidentalist? Um, we're planning on forking the next, uh, the February version of Wheezy. So whatever that is, I believe it is hard float, not soft float. Okay. Uh, next, uh, um, do you need someone to run this? Yes, Adafruit is almost like 50 people-ish, so we have an entire team devoted to this. And you'll, yeah. uh, you, there's some of them are on the blog. They post on Adafruit, and you'll be seeing and meeting some of them. If we ever move Ask an Engineer to during the week, um, we'll have lots of uh, guests. It's hard to get all of our employees. They work really hard during the week to come. They're also partying They're on probably, Saturdays. We're the only ones that are I can tell you what I've done every Saturday for the last like three years. Yeah. Um, but we'll have more of the staff um, talking about different pieces of the fabrication equipment. Um, very soon. Um, also, look on the blog for um, Manufacturing Mondays or Factory Fridays, and you can yeah. meet lots of the staff who run some of the equipment here. But uh, yeah, we're we're going to be running it. Um, uh, Andy, James, Bacon, um, all of our team um, will be running it. Um, it'll be fun. Yeah. This is a this is a, yeah. Uh, someone wants to know how much. Does something like that cost? Well, glad Good you question. asked. Yeah, glad you asked. Basically... Don't forget to buy a kit. Yeah, basically, <laughs> um, so we don't have any loans and we never took any funding. So that's our savings uh, in that yeah. big box. Um, so uh, machines like this, um, usually they're somewhere in around the $200,000 range. Yeah. Can be less, can be more. Depends on all the different options. You can go crazy on all crazy. this stuff. Crazy. But that's that's the general territory. They, they are, yeah, you basically have to budget um, 150 to 250 thousand dollars for a uh, industrial picking place. Yeah. With accessories. Okay. Next up, uh, do you know if it's possible to interface uh, FRC driver station with Arduino? I don't know what that is. Interface FRC driver station with Arduino. Don't know what an FRC driver yeah, station. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next up, can we send maybe. in code? Code for what? As maybe donation? Yeah. <laughs> Code donation. Uh, yeah, we had to get a compressor. Um, the compressor that we get, any specs that uh, you remember offhand that we had to make sure? The compressor is a 5 horsepower, um, 20 amp, uh, 208 three phase compressor that can do 120 psi and has a 50. Yeah, it had to be 120 psi. It has a 50 gallon tank, I believe. Yeah. And we got a super quiet one, and we've got a dryer, and it has this cool it's condensation. It's a 40-gallon tank. We oh, yeah, it's got, it has to have, you know, it's, it's oil-free, it's a screw compressor, which makes it much more expensive than a reciprocal compressor, but it's much more quiet. Yeah. Uh, it needs to be oil-free, has to have uh, an air dryer. You can't just, it's not just industrial air, it actually has to be um, dry, clean air, yeah. so we need to get a whole bunch of filters also for it, which we're showing on Monday. Yeah. Okay. Filtered compressor. Uh, next up. Hey, I have an old serial floppy drive from a friend's old server computer. Would you have any experience with that? Would it be possible to read write to? Is uh, that the question? I would, yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I was like waiting for the next. Is it possible to what? They want to read write from it? Yeah, they want to read write to it. The, um, yeah, there's emulators out there for the serial floppy drives, like the Tandy. I remember yeah. it was a serial floppy drive, and uh, it's probably something similar to that. So you could you could look at that. They're actually pretty straightforward. I think the the emulator for the um, knitting machine that Becky has it was a serial port Tandy floppy. Yeah. Um, for the pick and place machine or the compressor, I should say, do you have to run a cleaner in the front for the air? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we have to have filters. 
Um, next up, oh, uh, why are we getting this pick and village machine? Why? Um, so why? a few things. Uh, one, we'll have lots of things in stock at all times. That's a good um, question. Why did we get it? <laughs> no, I mean. Oh no! Why? Why did we do that? Yeah, we don't own a car or a uh, house or the, anything, so we we dump all of our money into electronics. Um, so. The picking place we had was not fast enough. Yeah, and, it's exceeded. Uh, it, it's it's a good machine, and we've had it for three or four years now, um, but it can only do uh, about a thousand or so components per hour. Yeah. Um, and a thousand components per hour means that a board like the NFC driver, or um, the 16 channel servo, mm. or a shields that are you know to have a lot of components on them, um, they were actually just taking too long. Yeah. You know, it would actually take 15 minutes to pick and place a panel, or more. It would take like half an hour to pick and place a panel. Um, it's just way too slow. You know, like a, a if you I mean a thousand CPH is like it's not that much. It's like a component every three seconds, and if it, some components took longer. Yeah. So we will need something much faster. Uh, next up, how can I tell the library true random in Arduino or just random to choose between two choices, not necessarily number choices? Um, well, you can make an array, and then um, then you would randomly pick a number, and then you'd index into an array. Because random libraries, I mean, I don't know what li library you're using, but um, they'll only do numbers. Okay. Uh, next up, what are you doing with the old pick a place? Well, we're keeping it for now. Yeah. Um, we want to make sure that one, our new one, is up and running. Of course, um, we're deciding. It is not the prize for this week's. Yeah, we're deciding uh, what we're going to do. We have a, a few options, and uh, it'll probably stay here. It might be a single focus pick and place machine. We're also talking to a partner company about them possibly uh, using it. So we'll see. Uh, I believe that is it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I think it's going to be trivia question time. All right. Oh, how do you solder the? Uh, sorry, I skipped one. How do you solder the, uh, um, the parts after picking place? You can answer. I this. usually fill oven. That's right. Which we showed in a previous show and tell. I ask him here. Yeah. Okay. 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 It's trivia question time. Lady Ada, can you? Describe the rules. The rules for the pick, uh, the pick and play. The rules for <laughs> the, the rules of the pick and play. <laughs> um, uh, the rules for the uh, uh, trivia question contest are: uh, you can only enter once per lifetime. So if you've won something and entered, uh, if you've entered and won something, and uh, you got one four hours of sleep last night, um, you can't enter again. So you can only uh, win something once. And that's great because it means everyone gets to uh, win a fabulous prize. The prize is a yay micro without headers. It's still useful. You can only just solder headers to it if you want headers. You can also solder wires or, or clip or something to it. Um, the first person to answer correctly with spelling wins this fabulous prize. You email us. Yeah. All right. Ready? Yes. Um, the, uh, the question is, what was the date of Zephyrin Cockburn's day, of the future date that we were celebrating? So it's, um, when did the fictional thing happen in the future? We shouldn't we should really happen, but that, if it did uh, happen, it would have went, happened. When he went to warp and, uh, <laughs> Mighty Bob, April 5th, 2063, congratulations, Mighty Bob, April he's 5th, like, He's probably like, I memorized that for like a, like a, like a trivia contest for Star Trek and he's been sitting on that date yeah. all this time. Anyways, you win That's when fabulous. he went to warp one in his vessel, the Phoenix, caught notice of the Vulcans. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, you win a fabulous prize. Email support at Adafruit to claim your prize. Yay. For Way to go, Mighty winning. Bob. Email support at Adafruit.com. Go you. You know your fictional history dates. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um... So, you know, every week, uh, when I have time, I, I, I record a little video of MOSFET. I didn't have time this week, so here's your cat photo, folks. I can show um, an eating cat. An eating cat, yeah. Yeah, you want to do that? Went over the overhead again. Oh, oh the overhead again. Yeah. There. We deliver cat in electronic form somehow. Meow, meow, meow. Meow, meow. Meow, 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 meow. Meow. You could show the picture of the cat with the headphones. Well, yeah, I mean, we have, like, we have three total cat photos for this. this yeah, this show. is a lot of cat. Uh, you guys, seriously. It's true. Okay. So that's it for this week's right. show. We have to get out of here. Yes. We will read this make. Yeah. Um, we'll see everybody next week. Uh, we'll probably, hopefully, we'll have some more pick and play stuff. We're going to do little videos and other things as we build out our um, things. Oh, can you hand me that, uh, 
Uh, be careful. It's, yeah, it's yeah, heavy. Well, hold yeah. On. It's just extremely heavy. So this is One the, moment. Yeah, so this is the book. The books that we're going to be reading. Oh my god, this is so heavy. Yeah, this thing. This is the manual. That's that comes the manual. With it. And, uh, it's actually kind of nice that they actually give you like a manual because the last weekend place we got did not have a manual. Yeah, and so. That was really annoying. And so it comes with an installation CD, which is kind of nice. Um, with well, what if you need a computer? It has a CD key on it, only genuine. Um, this is I the, totally uh, got a crack for it. Yeah, this is the. Um, this is operational the handbook. handbook. And I like it. It's got this like nice uh, plastic this cover. This is the maintenance handbook. How Monthly inspections. And this is a ball screw um, machine. So you actually have to inject uh, grease into the uh, machine every month or so. Yeah, but that's not um, so bad. Yeah. This is the uh, fast and flexible chip shooter manual. Yeah. This is the uh, other one. Um, this is the tape feeder. This is the troubleshooting guide. Intense. This is the uh, technical reference. This is the administrator's guide. This is a big one. And uh, this is the uh, What's really cool, other it, comes, it comes with guide. really nice software. I got a software demo at Apex, which I really, really appreciated. I was like, this is really sweet. Yeah. Um, the nozzles. Oh, for the uh, person who asked, uh, um, how many parts per hour? It's uh, twenty-eight thousand. Yeah. So um, it's and a it lot. And it can do it can do down to um, a two hundred one by default. Yeah. And then um, Imperial, which they call a six hundred three. Yeah. Uh, metric, which was very confusing. Um, and then you can get nozzles to do oh uh, one zero zero five. Yeah. But uh, I am not doing 01005. This is like when you used to 0, get... 01005 can die in a fire. <laughs> this is I'm when not, you used to get software and it would come it. in all these boxes. Do you remember that? Remember when? Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> like I'm like, installing like, Solaris. Remember like Photoshop <laughs> used to come in like big ass yeah. boxes. So, so yeah, there you go. This is a line. And they, uh, line. someone wants to know, could you pick and place BGAs? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's like the first thing this does. Yeah. This can do... Um, you can do everything. This can do package on package. Oh, how big is the board area? I think huge. I mean, it's like it's like a foot by a foot at least. Yeah, we could make uh, you know computer motherboards if we want. No, to. these were these are used to make motherboards. Yeah. I mean, one like, of the so one of the cool things about yeah, Samsung yeah. is like they use these machines to make you know their phones, and they make I think the most phones in the world right now. They make all their electronics yeah. with their own equipment. It's kind of neat that they do both. Like they're like, oh yeah. Yeah, so like this has to be able to make stuff as as, as fine pitch as cell phones and. Um, yeah. It definitely can do package on package because I asked them about that because there's some chips that use you know pop like you know the Raspberry Pi. Yeah. Um, uses pop. Um, I do not know where the stats are. But you can look up online that if you Google for the Samsung SM42, you can go to the Samsung TechWin website and they will tell you all the stats you could ever want to know that I don't have memorized about. Size and placement speed and all yeah. that stuff. Okay. Yeah, we got the six nozzle machine. So six, all right, six times the nozzling. Yeah, put that box back. I'm gonna put this box back. You okay, put back. I'm not lifting that box. I know it's heavy box. Okay, everyone, we're out of here. We'll see everybody next week. We will return. Same bat time, same bat channel, as they say. And uh, thank you everybody for all your great questions, for being in the show and tell. Good show. And uh, thank you for supporting Adafruit. Don't forget. Please help our pick and place fund. Yeah. We spent like two hundred thousand dollars on this thing, okay? Yeah. We think it was a good so idea. So that we can keep kits in stock. We think it was a good idea. That's the code, Ampira. And here is your moment of Zener.